Okay, we're jumping into some legacy now between shenanigans represented by Bob Debanese on the bottom against uh, my team, who I forget the name. Let me check. Mighty Lux, uh, Tyler Adams at the top of the screen. Um, I can tell from the top, and because Tyler told me he's on Omni Show, two ancient tombs from Bob suggest he's probably on Eldrazi. We'll have to wait and see. Devin Sowers is going to join me, but he's disappeared somewhere, so I'm by myself for now. So it looks like it's... Uh, we're looking at Tyler's hand, so he's got the show and tell of the omniscience and Bob ah oh, okay so Bob's on Eldrazi Kozilek and I have not seen that in Legacy before very strange but that could backfire for Tyler once he casts a show and tell So there's Bob trying to resolve Trina's Sphere, but it gets spell pierced. And he plays at a cloud post. These lands are a bit different. He's got Vesuva, Vespian Stage, so it looks like he's kind of tweaked his own mana base for an Eldrazi build. So here we go. We're going to see if Tyler's going to go for the show and tell. That's going to backfire spe spectacularly. He could go sneak attack if he wants to play around that but uh, Om Omniscience is not going to get him anything so he probably doesn't want to drop it until he's got something in his hand So we're on to Bob's turn, I'll just bring up Bob's hand. Grim Monolith. Yeah, this is a really strange build that he's got going on here. So the jig is up now, the Inbringer comes down. Uh, Tyler knows what's what, but unfortunately for Tyler, he wouldn't be expecting Kozilek. Yeah, so here comes Chantel, so he's going to get burnt big time here. And I don't see how he's going to get around this. And down comes Kozilek. <laughs> so 17 power on the board, that's lethal next turn. Sneak attack can come down, but it's not going to do anything for him. Uh, Bob's going to take game one. Bob with no cards in hand. He didn't get the cast trigger from Kozilek because of the, the Omniscient, uh, sorry, the show and tell, but doesn't matter. Game one, a very quick game one goes to Bob Dibonis. I think he's just, uh, Tyler was just unlucky that uh, he had that in his hand. Just as a sideboard, this is Tyler's first game in, in the th tournament so far. 
and it's also shenanigans first game. Bob's playing for shenanigans for the first time. Uh, De De Verloren Halfen has a huge lead, 16 points from three matches. See if the sideboarding is finished. Okay, they're back. Okay, so see the chalice come down for one there. So ponder is no good. I don't. I don't think chalice will be the end of the world for Tyler because he's. I mean, it's going to kill his setup spells like the ponders and the brainstorms, but he can play around. He can get to turn three show and tell. Uh, I'll just look back at Bob, see what's going on over there. Bob's got, oh, two Ugans. Yeah, this is a home brew. So he, he's going to, and the problem here for Tyler again is that Bob's generating mana from artifacts. He's got six mana available from artifacts, whereas, um, Tyler's going to Blood Moon and it's going to do virtually nothing for him. Uh, even show and tell if he had something is big trouble because it just means Ugin's going to drop. So I suspect we're going to see a very fast game too. You look at Bob on his second, third turn with three, six, nine mana and artifacts. Crazy. And this game's over again, so Tyler goes is going to go down two 0 I think, in very quick fashion. So his third turn, two blood moons, not what you want to see. Here comes blood moon, but it doesn't matter. And we'll have to see Tyler's reaction when... Oh, okay, so yeah. He's going to buy himself some time because the monoliths will take two turns to untap. One, two... He needs three mana. So, so Bob needs... Uh, the Eye of Ugin can't tap for mana, so he still needs to find one more mana source. So Tyler's got some time here. I think I would have dropped a sneak attack there, just to diversify. Just see, I think once Bob finds the next... Run, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know n enough about Legacy to know if this is legitimate or not, but it doesn't look like it. The Dynamo is going to start untapping the Monoliths. He's got a 3, 6, 9, 12, 14, 14 mana available. And Tyler does not want to cast show and tell, that's for sure. <coughs> so 
see what he draws here. He's hitting pr plenty of lands, but no threats. He's still not going to drop sneak attack. Strange. Okay, so here we go. Going to work with the three, six, seven, eight, nine mana. Seven. Oh, you can cast all the mog now if he wants. I oh no, because I have Ugin because of the blood moon. Okay, one, two, three. He's nine. He's one short. So this. Can you do it now? Yeah, three. Yeah. Okay, he's gonna cast Ugin first. <laughs> We'll see if this just brings a concession. Which way does Ugum go here? He's going to go up. Blood Moons I don't think he really cares about because the Dynamo is untapping the Monoliths. And I have no idea how Tyler can get out of this one now. Grizzlebrand doesn't have haste. So Ugin can still take care of the Grizzlebrand, but it, he can at least draw cards from Grizzlebrand. Oh no, he's going to get slaughtered now. The only good, the only good thing to come out of this is that it's not going to get the the trigger from the cast trigger from Ulamog, but Ulamog on the battlefield is going to be game over. So his own card has defeated him twice. <laughs> Even he, he can't actually activate Grizzlebrand. looking for there's nothing he can find uh he does have one more activation but i don't know what he has that can save him here possibly a pithy needle will stop ugin but then he still can't stop ulamog oh grizzlebrand's got haste so he, he can do does he want to hit ugin for I think he's got to hit Ugin here, yeah. Oh no, he's down to two life. Does he have another... Hit Ugin down to... Two. Get seven from Grizzlebrand, then minus seven, draw another seven cards, and hope to hit another Grizzlebrand that he can use as a chump block blocker for Ulamog. I think that's his only path out of this. He's got a hell of a lot of useless one drops in his hand. He can discard this quite easily. So now, now, why didn't he get life then? Is it damage to player? Oh no, he he did. Sorry, he drew. All right. And he's got Emrakul, but or well, he can sneak Emrakul in in response to Ulamog. But no, he's going to concede, so Bob takes it two games to zero. 